You're watching KRDO News Channel 13, where the news comes first. Your news starts right now. Good morning, Colorado. It is 6.30 on Friday, November 15th. I'm Bryn Carmen. And I'm Josh Elman. Thanks for tuning in this morning on this beautiful Friday, November morning. Now, we kick off this half hour with the latest on the investigation into a local daycare owner. Officials raid the Play Mountain Place daycare here in Colorado Springs. That's right, and dozens of children were found inside behind a false wall. News Channel 13's Colby Crossy joins us now live outside that daycare this morning and has more on this disturbing case. Colby, can you imagine being a parent to one of these kids? Yeah, absolutely, Bryn. And yesterday brought a lot of questions with it, uh, some that the parents obviously were not aware of. Now, if you take a look behind me, you can see uh, the house. Not a lot of movement here this morning as this daycare remains closed. As for how long, that's something that we still do not know at this time. However, what we do know is when law enforcement and the Department of Human Services conducted a welfare check, they didn't find children at first. The owner, 58-year-old Carla Faith, refused to cooperate with officers, but they could hear the sounds of children coming from somewhere in her home. A short time later, they found 26 kids hidden behind a false wall in a finished basement all under the age of three. Initially, three adults inside the daycare were cited for misdemeanor child abuse, but those charges were ultimately canceled by detectives as they continue to investigate. Now, we reached out to the Department of Human Services. They say suspending licenses is rare because you must meet several requirements and complete pre-licensing training. We are not able to summarily suspend a license unless we believe there's imminent danger to children. However, in this case, face license has in fact been suspended. And it's not the first time either. She faced similar legal trouble in California with the state shutting down several daycare operations that she owned. Now at this time, we're working to learn just how long this daycare will be closed. That's something we will obviously continue to keep you updated with. But for now, I'll send it back to you here in Colorado Springs. Colby Crosley, Cardio News Channel 13. Colby, thank you. We've had 10 days of witness testimony in the Patrick Frazee trial so far. He's the man accused of killing his fiance, Kelsey Barrett, and prosecutors have confirmed they will likely rest their case later today. Yesterday, a DNA expert took the stand, explaining to jurors that Crystal Lee destroyed some of the DNA evidence in Kelsey Barrett's apartment. It's reported Lee used bleach to clean the crime scene, but she wasn't 100% effective. Blood samples came back as a match for Barrett's. Meanwhile, jurors were also presented with cell tower evidence. It shows Frazee and Barrett's phones were together in the hours after the presumed murder. That's despite text messages depicting a long distance conversation between the two. This was the same phone that Lee later testified to destroying back home in Idaho. Now, yesterday, attorneys also put in a request to introduce a new witness as well as new evidence that has not yet been presented. It will all be up to the judge to review everything and decide whether it will be presented in court. Our very own Crystal story will be in court later this morning, bringing us the latest from the trial. And switching gears to weather now, we want to take you outside for a beautiful look at our wire nut camera. This is above Cheyenne Mountain on this Friday morning. Just a great glow in the clouds there as we wake up. We want to send things over to Katie. A little cooler today and tomorrow, but not looking too bad for the weekend. Yeah, not looking too bad. I think today is actually going to be really nice. We've got a mix of clouds and sunshine. Temps will be in the 40s and then by the afternoon it will be in the 60s, about 64, 65 degrees. So a really nice day here. And then for the evening hours, look for continued cloud cover. In fact, probably going to increase it a bit overnight tonight. And the nice thing about those clouds, it's actually going to keep us fairly comfortable through the overnight hours. Uh, so we're not going to get into those 20 30s, I think more likely upper 30s to around 40 through tomorrow morning. Pueblo, you're also going to see that mix of clouds and sun today. We've got that uh, temp near 70 for the afternoon high, so a nice warm day for the Steel City. And then tonight, the same story, increasing those clouds a bit more with temperatures in the 50s. And if you want to get out and walk the dog over the next few days, I think uh, Saturday probably your only day where you might want to stay inside. There will be breaks in the rain, uh, but we're not looking at anything in the way of super nice weather for Saturday. I think it will be a little bit breezy, definitely uh, cooler, especially through Sunday. And then for Monday, Tuesday, 
back under some dry skies and we'll be feeling some warmth again. Send things back to Hannah now with your traffic tracker. Yes, good morning to folks in the security wide field area. Accident free in Colorado Springs Highway 115 and Mesa Ridge Parkway looking clear. As the sun is coming up this morning, we can see traffic building, but overall, those westbound lanes, no trouble spots to track. If you have to travel to Fort Carson, no need to add extra time to your Friday morning commute. Looking on Highway 24, here's a look at Fountain Avenue. Very quiet on Highway 24, but that could change later on this morning. Starting at 7 o'clock and lasting until 5 o'clock, there will be single lane closures on Highway 24 between Woodland Park and Colorado Springs. There will also be shoulder closures in the right and left lane to add extra time to your commute, especially if you are traveling to the high country this this weekend, you will need that extra time on Highway 24. That's a look at the roads. Josh and Bryn, back to you. Thanks for that update, Hannah. This morning, Denver police are increasing patrols at the downtown Islamic Center and other mosques in the city. This after they arrested a man accused of threatening Muslims outside a mosque before their afternoon prayers. Police describe the suspect as a Hispanic man and say he was under the influence. Officers say he approached people outside the mosque with a rifle and then threatening comments. He came first and threatened everyone that I'm going to shoot you all, I'm going to let this place up uh, and all these scary uh, intimidation. And then after that, he came with the gun, so everyone ran away. The suspect wasn't able to get into the mosque. He actually fled the scene, but was arrested a short time later. No one was hurt, and police believe this incident was isolated, but they are now looking into whether this was a hate crime. Meanwhile, a Douglas County man is recovering from a deer attack. Authorities believe the two-year-old buck was raised by someone in the area who recently set the animal free. Jordan Wynn says the encounter with the deer probably lasted just a few minutes, but it felt like hours. He suffered wounds to his arms, his legs. His wife, Janica, also punctured her hand. So I could grab the collar with one hand and his head with an antler with another hand and that gave me the leverage to shove his nose into the ground. I stayed here for a few minutes while he was over there and then he walked that way so I came over here. Earlier in the week the same deer chased a 10 year old boy and this photo was posted to a Facebook page detailing a similar aggressive deer in a collar looking to hurt people. When deputies arrived at the Wynn's property they shot and killed the deer. It's still unknown where it came from. It's illegal to own wildlife in Colorado. Officials say wildlife belongs to the state and all citizens. Well, it's been nearly four months since we caught you up on the big project to build a new summit house on Pikes Peak. That's right. Officials have given us another update to $60 million are going into this project and it's, sh it's really shaping up. Workers are about to stop exterior work for the winter, but they'll continue working inside. Plenty of insulation, some heating units, sealing off the building will help keep the workers warm up there because it does get really cold. We spoke with a tourist who was surprised to see the construction up there. We came in here with the idea of wanting to see a good view. And when I came in here, you know, unfortunately, I would have loved for it to be finished, but that definitely looks like it's going to turn out amazing. Just give it one more year, dude. Workers are working hard and it's supposed to be done about a year from now. The old Summit House will be torn down after that new building opens. Organizers are still trying to raise seven million bucks in donations to finish paying for that project. It's so impressive to see this construction happening I on know. top of a mountain. Can right? you imagine what it takes I, to get all the gear up there and to work? I can't. Sounds like a good story. Mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> I'll be excited when it's finished Me as well. Too. Tonight on KRDO 13, we have two brand new episodes of ABC Comedies. It's American Housewife and Fresh Off the Boat starting us off at 7. Then at 8, catch the two-hour 2020 television event Undercover Girlfriend. After a University of Illinois student scholar disappeared, 2020 reports on how the girlfriend of the suspected kidnapper and murderer worked with the FBI to bring him down. Then find out how much time we're going to get outdoors this weekend with your storm track. 13 forecast on News Channel 13 at 10 o'clock.